it's Liv. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a different video and as you can see from the title it is about self-love or how to like yourself. I'm actually really fortunate in that I've never had an eating disorder or I've never um, acquired certain behaviors as a way of punishing myself. I'm really really lucky to have never gone through any of that and I think it's because I've had pretty, I don't want to say realistic, but just like logical approach to myself, I guess. Today I just want to talk about the things that I have done to get to where I am today into a position of actually, you know, respecting myself and seeing myself as valuable and um, all of that. I wrote it down in a book so that I wouldn't forget <laughs> any of my points. So if you see me looking down, that's why. Here's some tips on what I have done and what I currently do to like not bash myself and to just hold myself to a higher standard and to actually like myself. I'm not saying that, you know, you should be cocky and conceited and anything like that. That's not what I mean at all, but I think a lot of people you know, expect other people to like them, but they can't even like themselves. Or they expect other people to respect them, but they don't even respect themselves. And that's, I think, where the problem lies. Okay, so my first number one tip is, I'm sure you've heard lots of people say, get rid of your scale. And that's because a lot of people have, like, an obsession with weighing themselves. And I 100% understand that. Scales, like, play this weird numbers game with your head. So if you haven't done that, do that. But what I think is also important is to get rid of your full-length mirror. I've had a full-length mirror in my room since I was like, I don't know, probably 14 or 15. And I understand it's really practical, like you can see what your outfit looks like or how you look in something, but I noticed that when I had a full length mirror in my room, every time I would walk by it or every time I would catch my reflection, I would kind of look at it and scrutinize it and, and think things about it, you know? It was over in that corner over there across from my bed. And so when I would wake up in the morning, I would look in the mirror and be like, oh God, look at my stomach or whatever I was thinking that day. And so I just decided one day, I was like, why do I even have this? In, like in my room. I don't need it. I don't, <laughs> it's not necessary. So I took it out of my room and I just put it in the other room behind a door. And I was like, if I need to look in it, then I'll just go look at what my outfit looks like or see if there's, you know, anything on the back of my pants or whatever. But that was probably about a year ago, actually. And I haven't moved it back into my room and I rarely use it when it's out there. As of now, like I, I don't, see my reflection that much unless it's from you know shoulders up in my other mirror that I have it has helped so much I just found I was wasting so much time in my day every time I would see myself I would like look at myself and you know just like scrutinize what I saw and that's so pointless like why would you be wasting your time like looking at your reflection like just get rid of your mirror it's taking up so much of your time it's not helpful whatsoever you don't need to look at yourself that much my second tip is to stop putting down other women and actually just stop commenting on their physical appearance at all a lot of people actually without realizing it like you're scrolling scrolling through instagram and you see a picture of someone all of these thoughts start coming in before you even consciously think about them and obviously if they're negative thoughts and you're like constantly putting other women down saying oh look at her like why is she doing that why is she making that face why did she post this that's clearly not beneficial to anyone else and especially not to yourself it kind of makes you feel like other people are doing that to you or you start doing that when you see pictures of yourself and that just starts a whole cycle of bad thought patterns if you find yourself just comparing yourself to people is to just like stop commenting on their appearance at all so even if you look at her and you're like wow her body's so great like she looks so good even though you're saying nice things about that person and you're not technically doing anything wrong, you're still making yourself feel like, like you're still comparing yourself to that and you're still thinking like, 
oh, she has a great body compared to what I have, or she has a great body compared to other bodies that I've seen that aren't as good. And I think that that is just really harmful, especially if you're trying to, you know, be more loving towards yourself. Just stop commenting on people at all. If you see someone walk by and you say to your friend, she had huge boobs, it's like, who cares? Like, you just stop looking at people and commenting on them just about their body. Why would you be, you know, feeling bad about how they look when you look good too, you just look different? Obviously, give compliments to people, but if you know what I mean, like, I think you know where the line is between, like, giving someone a compliment here and there and, like, constantly with every person you see just like letting this wave of insecurity hit you you know okay the next one is to stop commenting on your own body this one is something that i found really difficult but i was actually talking to my sister recently and we we're just saying how you know you have those friends where you take a picture with them and then you know you flip your phone around the first thing they say is ew, oh my god, don't post that, like, no, I look so bad, ew. And it's like they have this reaction to themselves where they're disgusted. But then you you have that one friend who's actually, like, okay with how they look, or, and you take a picture with them, and they look at it, and they go, oh, that's so nice, what a cute picture. Whenever that used to happen to me, I'd be like, what, why do you, you actually like how you look in this? Like, what, you're allowed to like how you look in photos? And I never understood that, and my sister and I were thinking, like, why aren't more people just like you're not gonna look perfect in every picture like it's so crazy to us that you know people can look at a picture and just go like oh my god ew and just have this like immediate reaction of disgust it's like what the hell like why why are you reacting like that i think it just takes practice to be able to see a picture of yourself and seeing the other things in it like is it a picture with your best friend who you haven't seen in a long time like notice the other things about the picture other than just yourself and you'll start to realize that you really like the photo a lot more so i've i've sort of turned into the person that is you know sees a picture and they go oh that's so cute because i realize that you know in 10 years you're gonna look back on the picture and you're not gonna go oh my god i look so terrible you're probably going to say oh like look how young i was that's so sweet you know that was my best friend in high school i miss her you're not going to be thinking like, oh my god, look at my thighs. You're not going to think that at all. If you change your immediate reaction to something, then it can just overall help you with your self-love. Another thing that I do is if I, you know, catch a glimpse of myself or I look down and I see like the roll of fat on my stomach and I'm like, oh, my stomach's so big, I'll stop myself like right after that first thought hits and I'll just close my eyes and I'll take a deep breath and I say in my head not out loud stop and I just like I say the word and I just stop all those thoughts because I know as soon as that one thought comes then it's like this wave of them will just come it's like opening the floodgates and all these terrible thoughts start coming in it's like oh I really should have worked out I shouldn't have eaten that whatever you don't realize how much of like a string of thoughts will happen in such a short amount of time until you start stopping yourself after the first one or in the middle of the first one or before you even have the thought so it's a really good practice to get into to just start you know take a deep breath and just say stop and then do, go do something else and so the reason why i say go do something else is because normally if you're doing something that you love or you're doing something that you have to or like you're just doing something productive you don't have time to just sit around and like whine about how you look okay the last one i have the last point I have is to stop caring about clothing sizes. I know that this is a really hard one because when you see like weight loss shows, they're like, she went from a size 12 to a size 8 and whatever. And it's like, that means nothing. Sizes vary from country to country. So it's not like I'm going to look at a pair, of, you know, my size 4 pants here. And then in Europe, I'm a size, what, like 36 and be like, oh my god, I'm a size 36, but I'm a size 4 here. No, you just know that the sizes are different. So why is it that people get upset when they're in one store and they're a medium, and then they go to the next store and they have to get a pair of pants in a large or something? Like, it's just a way for them to differentiate between the clothing and for you to know, like, this shirt is smaller than this shirt. I've seen people, like, you know, they try on a size and then it's like, they say, oh, I, I need a size up in that, and they get all embarrassed and ashamed or upset about it, and it's like, 
why would you get upset? If you're ever trying on clothes, you're in a change room and you find yourself getting upset about going up a size, not fitting into the size you thought you were going to. Who cares? It's just a size on a piece of clothing. I don't really focus too much on the size of things because I have stuff in my closet that's an extra small that's like really stretchy fabric that happened to fit me and then I also have something that's a large and I don't really label myself by like the size of clothes that I fit into. Yeah, those are the things that I've followed throughout my life. Like, you know, some of them more than others in certain parts of my life. But I think that's why I have such a logical and rational outlook on how I see myself. When it comes down to it, you honestly are all you have. If if you don't love yourself, then like who's going to, you know? There's no other choice. Your life kind of depends on it. And it seems really sad and kind of depressing, but it's true. There are no dress rehearsals in life. I know it sounds cliche, like, you know, love yourself now, but focus on doing things that promote you feeling better about yourself and you liking yourself because in the end, you're the one who's gonna benefit from it. So why wouldn't you wanna do it? Okay, so those are all my thoughts on that. Well, not all of them, definitely not all of them. <laughs> those are some of my thoughts on this topic. And I wanna know what you guys think about this because I think it's one of the biggest problems that I think most women and a lot of men face is that they just spend so much time hating on themselves and they don't realize that you're actually allowed to like yourself. That is what I'm hoping to start a conversation about with this video. Um, I will see you guys next time for another recipe video and if you haven't already make sure you're subscribed so that you can see all my videos when they first come out. I will see you next time.